we have a forum post by Orion and it's pretty much the first big tease of the upcoming crafting rework. Now it's important to state that this forum post talks about the first crafting event for the forester profession. So this is not a post about the whole crafting revamp, but rather introducing the first crafting event that we're gonna get. So there's a lot of text and instead of just reading this forum post, I'm just gonna go into the game and try to explain everything that is happening with this first forester event. So I am currently in the game and I am right outside the comp lumber camp. So pretty much northeast of Breetown you have Comp and to the east is where you find the Lumber Camp. This is where the first crafting event will take place. They were also considering Scary in the Shire for this event, but it seems likely that we'll have the Prospector slash Scholar events happening in Scary instead. So for the Forester crafting event, the Comp Lumber Camp was chosen as the location. So this is where the first event will take place. When we have all the crafting events active, each event will stay active for about four to five days. And then they will be down for two to three weeks before they return. So basically every event will be active for four to five days. Let's say Forester is active for four to five days. When the Forester event ends, then probably the Prospector event will be active when Prospector ends, maybe the Weaponsmith event will be active, and so on. But the Forester event will be the first one that will be active, and it's likely, since it's going to be the only one active when it arrives, it is highly likely that it will just stay open until we get other competing events that can take its place. So the way this is going to work, to do the event you will have to go to the camp, there will be NPCs here that you can interact with and you simply have to pick up a daily quest. There's a daily quest for this event. It can be reset using Mithra coins if you would like to do that, but it's a daily quest you pick up and then you register for the event in order to join. This event can be done at any level, doesn't matter if you're level 140, if you're level 5, anyone can join. All you need to do is be a forester. Obviously, since it's a forester event, you just need to be a forester. It doesn't matter your rank or anything. All you have to do is be a forester and you can pick up the quest and register for the event. And once you pick up that quest, you cannot leave the area. If you leave the area, you will lose the quest and you'll have to pick it up again. Now, the way that this event is going to work, there's going to be a message. If you're in the Breelands area, you should get an announcement on your screen and in your chat that the Forester crafting event will start in 15 minutes, giving people time to travel over here, pick up the daily quests, and when the 15 minute timer expires, you should be able to register with the NPC for the event. And I believe there will be messages for when the first person picks up the quest or the second person picks up the quest. At least for sure when the second person registers, there will be a two minute time limit so a message that will say that the event will start in two minutes and anyone who already had the quest can start registering for it. There's no limit on how many people can join. But once the third person register for the quest, the daily quest will no longer be available until the next event begins. So if three people have registered, then anyone who has the daily quest can still register and there will be a two minute timer until the event starts. And as soon as whoever is like the, the chief of the event says go, that's when the event will start. Now the way that this event will work is basically that you pick up an axe that's been provided for you. Everyone will pick up the axe. You need to harvest some wood. I don't know exactly where the wood will spawn, probably in the area pretty close. Harvest wood, refine it, get it judged for the NPCs. After you do that, gather some bear skin and I'm assuming you kill some bears and get some bear skins, refine the bear skins and get them judged. Then you have to sample brew from nearby taverns. So I'm assuming in comb there should be some brew. And then finally you collect a caber and carry it through a race course. Now I'm not sure exactly where the race course and all this stuff will be, but that's basically the steps you take. First you get some wood, refine it, get it judged, then you get some bear skins, refine it, get it judged, then you sample brew from nearby taverns and inns, 
and then you collect a caber and carry it through a race course. Now, when it comes to rewards for doing this, there's going to be ribbons you can get. So everyone who participates gets a participation ribbon. That's a barter item that will go into your barter wallet. It will be bound to account. And for first place, there will be a winner's ribbon. For second, there will be a runner-up ribbon. And like I said, everyone gets a participation ribbon. So that's like a consolation prize. Even first and second also get a participation ribbon. So first place gets a winner's ribbon and a participation ribbon. Second place gets a runner-up ribbon and a participation ribbon. Everyone else, third and below, gets a participation ribbon. Now, the ribbons will have a cap to encourage you to spend them. You can also trade ribbons up and down. So like a winner's ribbon would be worth 100 participation ones. A runner-up ribbon would be worth 10 participation ribbons. So you can either trade up or trade down depending on the items that you need. So other than the ribbons, what else will you get from doing this event? Every person who does this event, when you turn in the daily quest, you get a large amount of Forester XP, so you can advance your craft by doing this. There are consumable items you can get. You can get whetstones that will increase your critical chance. I believe the whetstones will be like clickable items that can increase your crit chance for a small time. And the main reward for this will be a modifiable Forester's Axe. So I'm going to try to explain this because there's a lot to it. But basically you can barter for a modifiable Forester's Axe. And with this axe you can change the appearance and also upgrade the axe to become stronger and more useful to you. There's going to be crafting recipes you can barter for that are used to upgrade your modifiable crafting tool. So for the Forester event it's going to be a Forester's Axe that you can upgrade. And this Forester's Axe comes in eight different outputs. They can be Dwarf, Hobbit, Elf, Westerners, Stone, Ornate, Gold, and Mithril. These will change the appearance of your crafting items. So whenever you're, say, you're uh, harvesting wood in the wild, it'll change the appearance of your axe depending on the cosmetic output that you choose. So once again, you have a Dwarf output, Hobbit, Elf, Westernies, Stone, Ornate, Gold, and Mithril outputs. So basically the way it's going to work, you first barter for the base modifiable Forester's Axe. So you have that axe. It's pretty bad. It's just a basic thing. Then you barter for a cosmetic output. That's when you get the first tier of crafting recipe. And you craft it to change the appearance. That means you will have the tier 0 Forester's Axe with your cosmetic appearance. From this point, you will need more barter items to upgrade your Forester's Axe, and there should be up to five tiers, so tier five would be max, which will be a gold quality legendary Forester's Axe modified with your cosmetic appearance. So in order to keep getting these crafting recipes and upgrading your axe, you need to continue doing this event, get more ribbons, there's also another item you can butter for called a lucky stone setting. These settings will also be used in the recipes to upgrade your crafting tool. So to use my current crafting item as a comparison, the first tier of the new modifiable crafting axe that you get should be the same as a universal crafting tool, meaning that the forester chopping duration should be minus three seconds. But when you upgrade it to legendary, it should be as strong as the current best ones we can get now or even stronger i'm not exactly sure about the values but it should for sure be at least four seconds at the max level and there's also going to be an increased critical chance on your forester's axe so another thing that this forester's axe will do when you upgrade it every tier you upgrade it will have a higher chance when you chop wood to find a rare item so i'm assuming that means you can get a shard depending on which log, which level the log is that you chop down. So hopefully I explained that so people could understand. Of course, if you're not sure, just ask in the comments. I'll do my best to reply. And also in the future, we're going to get recipes to combine our tools into one. So your new Forester's Axe is obviously just for foresting. 
any foresting, uh, chopping wood, any foresting you do, refinement, anything you would use your forester's axe for. But in the future, we're going to get recipes once we have more events, more crafting tools, to combine our new modifiable tools into one item where you get all the benefits. Other rewards you can get are cosmetics. There's going to be five new lumberjack outfit cosmetics. You cannot dye them, but they come in five different versions. There's black, blue, red, gold, and mithril. The so five new lumberjack outfits, non dyeable. There's also going to be 13 new titles that you can get. Eight of them you can bother for. Another five you get for continued participation in the event. And these new titles will obviously have ties to the Forester. You can also earn some permanent effects. There's going to be five new emotes that you can earn. And they will probably be related to foresting, something like this. We don't know yet. There's going to be two new skills. They're cosmetic based skills. So probably skills you can use to simulate something from the event. And you're also going to be able to bother for five new traits. So these are going to be passive skills or passive traits, I guess I should say, that will increase your forester crit chance or something along those lines. There's also going to be new housing items, three decorative furnitures that you can display for outside your home. And there's also going to be two new usable pieces that will benefit your forester skills. So you can put two new housing items that you can interact with and they should give you some boosts to your foresting skills. And that pretty much covers the forum post that Orion posted. If you have any questions about anything that I explained, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll try my best to reply. In any case, we will get more clarity on everything on this Friday's Court of the Rings. I believe Orion will be on that Court of the Rings to talk about the crafting update, giving us more insight with crafting and everything that will happen with crafting. And another note is we are likely to get update 37 beta next week or the week after and with that update 37 beta, we should be able to do this event. The first preview of update 37 should have the Forester event for people to try and play. Of course, when that beta arrives, I will of course be trying the event and uh, making a video about it as well. So once again, if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. Hope you enjoyed the first tease of the new crafting event. Hey! Hey you! Yeah you! What do you want? You enjoy my content and you want to support me? Fine! I'll show you how you can do it. I would really appreciate if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel. You can also support me through my Kofi homepage. If you're playing or looking to play Lord of the Rings online, there is one place you need to be. The Guiniverse is a Discord server created for the community of the players of Lord of the Rings Online. The server is getting close to 7,000 members, and in this server you'll find tons of helpful information. There's monthly giveaways, easy access to patch notes, you can keep up with my YouTube videos, my streams. If you're a streamer, you can ask for the streamer role and you can announce your streams in the other stream channel. There are discussion channels for pretty much everything, every class, monster players, but the best thing about this server is probably the gearing resources tab, where you can find anything from trait lines for every class, every build. There are stat goals, where you can find out what stats you should aim for on your characters. Really helpful information about the drop rates from instances, as well as screenshot from all the new loot that appears in the game. If you enjoy Lotro, you should definitely consider joining this server, and hopefully I'll see you in Middle Earth. If you were part of the Guiniverse already, you might have noticed that another tab appeared at the top, the LFF server. This server is a brand new server that I created, the LFF Guiniverse. In this server, you can select which servers you want to keep up with. And once you select your server, say you select Arkenstone, you will see the LFF, the kinship advertisement, looking for kinship and trade channels. And there's also voice channels if people want to use those. The LFF channel is basically a looking for fellowship channel. 
where people can post if they need players for the runs. And this way, people don't have to be logged into the game to see the chat. They can just instead get a notification on their Discord. There's also a kinship advertisement page where kins can post their kinship advertisement and have people join their kins. And you can also post in the looking for kinship chat if you're looking for a kinship. But make sure to take a look in the kinship advertisement first and look through all the kin to find a suitable kin for you. There's also a trade channel if people want to buy or sell stuff that you can use. Hopefully you'll consider joining this server to bring the community even more together, not just in the game, but also outside of the game.